So I feel like a rock star because you have to hold the mic really close to you. Okay. Now, is it, so if you can't hear me, just wave. If you don't like me, you can make other hand signals. Uh, so here we go. Uh, so Vitria builds a platform for real-time analytics uh, focused on IoT, and that's what I'll talk about. I'll talk about a couple of customer use cases to begin with. But first, you know, I'm excited about real-time analytics for IoT because I see it can generate great value. Some estimates have been that analytics will generate five to six trillion dollars worth of value by the end of next decade. I think a lot of that would be real-time analytics in areas like at the bottom tier, we see secure and safe environments, you know, cybersecurity, fraud detections, you know, critical to all segments of IoT, whether you're talking about industrial, enterprise, or consumer. Uh, at the next tier up, you know, you're talking about operational efficiencies, operational performance, uh, and so uh, things like outage management, asset optimization, resource uh, optimization, predictive maintenance are really key for especially the industrial internet and the enterprise uh, internet of things. Uh, and then the top tier is all about revenue growth. And this is, of course, the most exciting, uh, where you can bring new business models, new revenue streams in, dynamic pricing, supply and demand. Uber did that for taxis, very interesting. Uh, customer, new forms of customer engagement using real-time analytics, where you really are aware of what the customer's doing and what they've been. And so you're situationally and uh, contextually aware of what the customer is happening. That means that you can make better predictive marketing offers to them. And then in the consumables and in the uh, commercial side, it's all about supporting my lifestyle. So what I'll do today is go over two use cases, uh, high level, and really on the operational efficiency side, those, those use cases that I've outlined just there. All right, so the first case study uh, is in the high-tech industry. Uh, and it's the equipment manufacturers for the semiconductor manufacturers. So it's not the Intels and the AMDs of the world. It's the suppliers that supply the Intels and the AMDs of the world. And that's a huge business. It's $37 billion business a year. Okay? Uh, and uh, one of the critical pieces of equipment on a fab floor is something called the lithography equipment. That's responsible for etching all those fine, detailed, nanoscale structures on the chip itself. So that's a critical component. And inside that component is a very specialized laser that uh, operates in the deep, deep ultraviolet regions to get those fine structures to it. And it fires at up to 5,000 times a second. Okay? And every time it fires, we collect 90 parameters of data around that firing itself. Okay. And that data is uh, then uh, compressed and uploaded every few minutes, five minutes now, going to 30 seconds every 30 seconds in the near future okay, to the original o uh, OEM, equipment manufacturer, so they can do analytics over it in real time. And the reason they want to do that is if that starts misfiring, then just a few minutes it can destroy millions of dollars worth of product. Okay. If you have to take it un offline unexpectedly, it can stop a whole product line. Uh, and if you, uh, every time you do preventative maintenance, then you have to reduce the capacity of that fab for the time of that maintenance. And they want to change all of that. And that is the role of predictive analytics here and real-time analytics is to help with this. First, I'll take just a moment to show you how we do that. Then I'll show you some of the results. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, you can think of the processing chain as a multi-stage processing network or pipeline. So we, certainly on the left-hand side, the information streams in. A lot of times it's real-time. In this case, it's coming in uh, every five minutes, again, going to 30 minutes. But once we ingest the data, we then keep it what we call streaming, flowing in memory through the rest of the process so that we can do real-time analytics. And the next step is to add what's called contextual awareness. That means to correlate it with context information that's important to understand what's going on with that equipment. The equipment profile, for example, the fab that it's in, the location of that fab, et cetera. So that's all the contextual information. The next stage is to correlate with situational information. That's the factors that could be affecting it, external factors. Uh, for example, temperature, temperature in the fab, temperature in the device, humidity, those sorts of factors, okay, which can affect its performance. 
Now at that point, which is a third stage here, okay, again, this is all real time, we have a very rich contextual and situationally enriched data stream that we're ready to do predictive analytics over. So we run the predictive analytic models, okay, in real time, and these models have been built offline typically using machine learning tools, and what we do is we operationalize those models to run at speed and at scale in real time. And so they will predict things like uh, problem lasers. They will predict when's the best time to do the maintenance, et cetera. And then after the prediction, we have to then prescribe what action to take. This is another type of analytics called prescription, prescriptive analytics. So that tells you, okay, I see this. What's the best thing to do? Schedule maintenance now, send an alert to the factory to pull that laser offline, et cetera. Okay, again, those are usually through machine learning terminals offline. It can also be top-down uh, decision rules as well. Okay, and they need to trigger the action. Okay, and in real-time analytics, the point is not only do the analytics, but also take the action. You, because without the action, there's really no use to do the uh, real-time analytics, not to do it in real-time at least. Okay, so this is what's going on inside. Okay, and this is what sort of we show. We show them what we call an IoT command center which is a view of every laser and what's happening with those particular lasers at any point in time. This is what we call a pan-temporal view of the world. So it shows you the now, which is the present, you know, in the, in the middle there. So we're, what the real-time Alex is telling you right now. On the left-hand side in gray is a recent history. And of course, the recent history in the now influences the prediction, which is on the right-hand side which is in the red, and it's usually shown in the red because the future is uncertain, right? So there's more risk involved with it. So that's that pan-temporal view of the world that was showing it. Sort of that view moves through time as time progresses through that. Now with this, of course, the intention is to do good predictions and do good prescriptions on that. So here we see two pieces of it, uh, two lasers. Uh, both uh, are trending yellow and red. And the first one is operating a little bit higher temperature than normal. Uh, so we're going to accelerate preventive maintenance, which will require pulling it offline you know, from a few days out to recommendation the next day or two, and certainly within the third day before you get in the red and the fourth day for that. Okay, and the bottom laser is uh, sort of a different issue going on with it. It has a higher than normal misfire rate. Okay, so again, that's in the, operating in the yellow, and we're going to, we don't have to stop it now, but we're going to have to pull that in, the preventive maintenance in that by, again, another couple of days. That's why it's yellow and then red. Okay. So then, then those, those go down as notifications down to the fab. Okay. Now, at any point in time, you can drill into a piece of equipment and see with more detail, granularity. So in this case, we drilled into the equipment one, which was the top one in the previous diagram. And now we're showing eight, history, eight hours of history behind and then a, a few hours of history predictions above. And you can see that in gray and in red. And the inset window is actually pulling the actual and the predictive together over the past few hours. And immediately that gives me a little bit of insight into what may be going on with that laser. It's firing at a higher duty rate than what was predicted. And hence, maybe that's the reason for elevated temperature. So that's immediate insight that I have from looking at this. OK, that's, exact, that's sort of use case one. So what we're able to do with this is using predictive analytics and prescriptive analytics to predict and optimize preventive maintenance so you improve service times, don't take it offline as often, and improve OpX. And then we can also detect operational anomalies early, which may include having to shut down that laser so to re reduce product defects. And this is a great example of how real-time analytics is being used in the real world today in the Internet of Things. It applies to manufacturing to transportation, et cetera. Okay. The next use case, which I'll go through hurriedly as well, is in the area of smart meters. And our customer is a tier one telco in Europe, one of the largest in Europe. And they have been awarded the contract for one of the largest smart meter projects in Europe. 53 million smart meters to be installed over the next five years. These are both electric and gas smart meters. 
Okay? And this is to meet the EU mandates, which they call uh, three, uh, triple 20 for 2020. So triple 20 for 2020. First 20 is 20% 20 reduction in consumption. The second 20 is 20% 20 reduction in greenhouse gases. And the third 20 is 20% 20 of energy from renewable sources. Now, we don't have anything to do with the third one, but with the first two we can help with. Okay. So in this case, the telco is responsible for installing the backbone and also the communication hubs. And there's going to be about 23 million of those communication hubs installed in homes and in factories and in uh, commercial buildings uh, throughout uh, Europe. And the initial two use cases targeted are, first of all, real-time power outage management. Uh, when you see some failure, you have to quickly diagnose what failed. Was it the communication backhaul? Probably unlikely. Was it the uh, communication hub? Could be. Was it the meter that failed, or was it the electricity that failed? So we have to determine very quickly what is the cause of the failure. And then when a restore uh, notification comes back through, we have to correlate that restore notification from the utility to see what our real-time view of the network is actually telling us on that. And sometimes they don't correlate, so sometimes they think they restored, but it's not. Okay. And the second use case is about device travel shooting. So real-time trend analysis at the individual hub level and the meter level. And the next goal is to do, use this trend analysis to do preventive maintenance. So that's the next thing that would be up here. Okay. So that's the use case in a nutshell. The business outcomes are, well, we've completed phase one, which we demonstrated to the government and was part of the reason that the contract was awarded. And that was a small scale, real time pilot of the system in operation. So it gave us a unified operations view as before, pen temporal view of the world, where we could correlate all the multiple information together, diagnose problems very easily in a geospatial context. Okay. But it also allowed timely actions in this case, real-time power outage management through the automated investigations of issues, the automatic uh, generation of trouble tickets, and through some sim simple corrective actions. So unified operations, timely actions, and process automation. That was the benefit of the solution. Uh, here is just a quick architecture view of our platform. Uh, it is uh, the heart of that is the analytics box over the left-hand corner there, where we do real-time streaming analytics, descriptive analytics, the predictive analytics, and also the prescriptive analytics. On top of that, we have the unified dashboards that give the pen temporal view of the world, showed examples of that. On the other side, uh, intelligent project process management is what affects the actions, actually uh, enables the actions to be taken very quickly. And those, the process management, the action could evolve over time, and they're contextually and situationally aware, so that if the incident changes, they will adapt accordingly. And then, of course, we have security in the end, data security in the end throughout the system. And then we can get information or we can stream any of these analytics into any number of warehouses and big data lakes. Okay. And on top of that, we're now just starting to develop IoT applications, you know, out-of-the-box applications for certain type of analytics in certain vertical markets, and also general analytics like baselining and um, take doing, uh, for example, KPI measurements. Hmm. Okay, with that, uh, just one more word. Uh, if you want to know more, we're sort of at the end of this little alleyway here, right before the hot dog stand, uh, which is um, at booth 108. So come by and talk to us about real-time analytics if you're interested in. And with that, I will say thank you. Excellent. Give them a round of applause. Are there questions? Where are my ringers? I Thank you. All right. So you spoke about two distinct use cases in your presentation. The question I have is um, how much are your algorithms reusable from industry, industry to industry, or are you choosing to focus on some specific verticals? Okay, so how much of our algorithms are reusable? Well, our platform is reusable, and that's really our main area of focus, okay? And we have data scientists on board, and we also work with data scientists and our customers to, to actually help them come up with their algorithms. But the goal here is the quick 
And I think here's a, a key point, is the quick operationalizing the algorithms themselves. And, and what we want to do is support a very rapid iteration cycle. Okay, so you come up with some algorithms that are good at prediction, maybe not great, but good, better than nothing. And then you operationalize them literally by importing them through PMML or using R. And we operationalize them at speed in real time. And then, then it's the role of prescriptive analytics to not only prescribe the actions, but to apply machine learning techniques to that to see what the outcomes were. And if the outcomes were an improvement, then that's good. Okay. And then you can refine your models and present it as a champion challenger now, running in real time. And you can see if your new models are beating the existing models and refine that. So it's a, it's a rapid iteration that we really focus on with our customers. Thank you. So any other questions? I've got a tough one, but I'm going to save it for us to talk offline. Okay. Give okay, them a round of applause again. Okay, thank you.